and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at all of the new type features in Photoshop CS6. Now the first thing that you'll probably notice is right across the top we have a new type menu. So that should make things a lot more accessible and easier to find for folks. In fact, you'll notice that right down here we've got panels and not only do we have our character and paragraph panel that we had before, but we also have the new character and paragraph styles panels. Now, I can go ahead and view these by just selecting them here, but I think it'd probably be better if we just come over to the new typography workspace so that we can see all of our panels on our right hand side. Now, I'm not sure if you've worked with character or paragraph styles in the past, but kind of the, the basic rule of thumb is you want to create your paragraph style to encompass the, the most amount of attributes that you want to assign to the type and then you would create a character style to kind of override those attributes. And it really doesn't matter in Photoshop, you can, you can start typing some type and then make that type look the way you want it to and then add your paragraph style or you can do it in the reverse way. You can just add some text and then create a new paragraph style and then assign it using the paragraph style option. So either way is just fine. What's important to keep in mind though is that just like everything in Photoshop, you have to select what it is that you want to affect. So for example, let me show you what will happen if I simply select the type layer on the layers panel and apply a paragraph style. You can see that I've made some already and I'll just select maybe blog header as my paragraph style. Well, you can see that because I had nothing selected, Photoshop assumed that I wanted to have everything selected and so it assigned this paragraph style to all of my text. Now that might not be what you want, so let's undo that with just a quick command Z and instead I'll go in and just select the first line of type here. And now when I apply the blog header paragraph style, it is only applied to that paragraph that I had selected. If I wanted to make a change to that, all I need to do is double click on my paragraph style and we can see here what I can change. So I have all of my basic character formats. I could go in and change something like the color if I wanted to. We can change the font, the font style. We have advanced character formats. We have all of our open type features. We have indents and spacing, which also includes, of course, all of our alignment and the justification options. We have composition so that if you do have a larger body of text, maybe two or three sentences, you might want to make sure that you change this from the um, single line composer to the every line composer and turn on that Roman hanging punctuation. What that does is if you have area type, it'll actually put the punctuation maybe outside the area that you've defined just by a wee bit. It just optically looks a lot better. Now obviously this is just some text that I happen to have gotten from my website, but you can see how helpful this would be if you were mocking up something and you had a bunch of different either point type or paragraph type that you wanted to quickly kind of brand or apply the same type treatments to. Now let's just go in here and look at character styles for a moment. You'll notice here that each one of these paragraphs at the end has some text. It's the date here. So I could just shift over to my character styles and then apply that style. Now here's another important point. Let's look at that style. I'm going to double click on it and you'll notice when you first start creating your character styles, all of this information is going to be blank and personally I would probably want to keep that blank, especially in this instance because I want my character styles to be or to have as broad of a use as possible. So I don't usually assign different um, fonts or anything to it. All I would want to assign is the one thing that I want to change. And in this case, I wanted to change the color of it. So when I use this, all of the paragraph attributes will stay applied. The only thing that's going to be different is the color. All right, so we would just come in here and I could go down to the next area of text here and apply that. And again, you can see how easy it is to do this. Now, I did talk about a manual override. Um, maybe for some reason you had applied a paragraph style and then even gone in here and even added a character style, but then you decided you wanted to change the color of this text for whatever reason. If we go ahead and change it, and I'll just make sure it's something we can see here, you'll notice as soon as I change that, and it is selected, but I can use Command H to hide that so that we can see that it's been changed to pink. You'll notice that next to the character style, there's a little plus icon next to it. That tells me that something has been changed. So it's not 
just that character style that's been applied, but I've actually done a manual override on top of it. Now, there's two icons right here, and you need to know the difference between the two of them because the one on the left is actually going to clear off the override. If you think, you know what, I just, I don't want that override, I want to take it away, that will clear it. But the one to the right will actually update your character style or your paragraph style with that option. So watch what happens if I do this. If I click the check mark, it will say, all right, I'm going to change my character style, and now look what happened. All of the other text that had that character style applied to it will automatically be updated. So if I just go ahead and create a new document right here, and let's go ahead and view both of these documents next to each other. So I'll go up here to Arrange, and we're going to just tile these. And I'll select the first image that had the text block in it, and we can either grab my Move tool or I can just grab the text layer on the Layers panel and drag that over. You'll notice that when I drag over a type layer from one document to the next, the character styles as well as the paragraph styles will come with the block of text that had those styles applied to it. And that's really important because the paragraph styles and the character styles, they're saved on a per document basis. So they're not like the other typical kind of like your swatches or your uh, brushes or anything. They're actually saved per document. So what I might suggest, if you have certain clients that you're always using the same paragraph and, and character styles for, is you just create like, like a template file, right, that has all of the styles created because you can always use the flyout menu and you can load your paragraph styles and you can also load your character styles. So if you have that one kind of template file, then you can always be loading them from that template file as opposed to the dragging and dropping. I mean, I think it's convenient that things come over when they drag and drop, but it's kind of nice to have that one templated document. We've also added a number of new spelling as well as hyphenation dictionaries. So as you're using the, the text and you're using spell check, um, you'll notice a huge improvement there. Now, I'm actually going to close these two files for a moment because I want to show you one last thing. But before I show this to you, I need to go to my preferences and go to type here, and I'm going to change our text engine. So Photoshop CS6 has two text engines, and I'm going to quit Photoshop for a moment and then let's relaunch it because I need it to switch over to this other new type engine. And then I'll open up this document. And if you're like me, you can't read what the document says, so it's translated right down here. But the important thing to point out is that we're now officially supporting Arabic as well as Hebrew. And in addition, you'll notice that right here, we're actually using kanji. And right down here, we've got hiragana inside this one single text block. So we've got Arabic, we've got Hebrew, we've got English, we've got Russian, and we're also showing the kanji and the hiragana type all within one single document. Well, there's a quick overview of the new typographic features in Photoshop CS6. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.